All right. Ah! Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have done that yet. Welcome, Welcome to the Lizzie Vaults. Vaults. He's Rex. I'm Rex. He's Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep making it more confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a gift from uh, tra Trash Titan Ryan Butler. Hey, he. It, he a, it's it's it happened. Cheers, you magnificent bastards. This is uh, New Jersey. New Jersey! And uh, this is Silk City. I can't remember if we've done these guys before, but this is a bottled and bond rye that they made. Uh, label does not look familiar. Mm -mm. But we have done a couple thousand whiskeys. Oh, uh, there is and a... And it's a memory dependent yeah, and someone whilst drinking. Yeah, exactly. So. I'm gonna get a little more in there for the nose to come. There is this sort of dark chocolate cherry note floating in the background of that, and that's a new experience for me straight out of the... Yeah, thank you. What you I mean. like the nose on that. Yeah, it's and a, it's, it's kind of like really balanced chocolate and cherry right there. There is a little bit of a wicker, and it smells a little thin, for lack of a better term. It smells... Shiny is the wrong word. Did you look at the proof? Well, it's bottled in bond, so it's going to be yeah, underproof. I should probably listen. Mm. Yeah. But what about the ABV? 100. <laughs> Do the math. By two. Drinking math is the best I'd math. Carry the five. Mm. 46. Wrong. If you would have said 50, you would have been wrong too. Ah, okay. <laughs> You're just prepared to say wrong no matter what. <laughs> it's wrong. Uh, there's a, a bit of a char note in there too. You see what I mean by thin nose? Even though I, I get things that would sound like they were dense, a dark chocolate and cherry, it still feels like it's surrounded by a, a veneer of some sort. I hear what you're saying, but I will posit this possibility. Perfect. Could it be what you see is kind of like a thinness is actually a brightness coming from the ethanol? Yes. Maybe the ethanol layer. That's why I said shiny. You said thin. I said thin, but maybe shiny. Hey, let's we'll, we'll, we'll put thin aside. Shiny. See how I fix you? <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Coldplay? Is that a song? I will try to fix you. Oh, and they're really listening to the lyrics. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just drank in that Chris Martin eye candy. You're <laughs> so distracted. <laughs> that is some flavor. Wow. Oh, I like that. That is a burst of flavor. Ooh. The wicker forward note shows up, but um, surrounded by all of that rich dark chocolate and cherry sweetness. There is a barrel tannin mm -hmm. mixed in with the chocolate and cherry note. But it, the nose and cherry. palate, very matched. Uh, but I would say the intensity of the palate. Way stronger. Yes. The ethanol sort of dominates the nose. I want to add a little water to this one for sure. Man, man. So that, I'm still going back to the nose. The ethanol is the front leading thing. Mm -hmm. But once you get into the flavor, bam, it's jumping out of the glass. Big flavors. So I got to say, I actually like that. Mm -hmm. You know what? I just had to look at the label to remind myself this is a rye. Mm -hmm. Nothing classic about those notes in terms of the expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, I'm not looking for simple herbal notes. Right, let's or, get very specific. This isn't MGP rye. The no. 95.5 mash bill. You're not going to have the... Uh, Sourced the, from Indiana. The it's anise, funny. that black licorice. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> We're wrong. It's MGP. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. And then going back, you know, I would, not get, I would not have guessed rye as a category. I don't think I would have said bourbon either. What would I have said? Oh, 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 did I add water to yours? I don't know. A little peppery, try it, and see if a little peppery note shows up three-fourths of the way through, that's post a little dash of water. I think I just did it to mine. But it did taste a little softer on the front end. I just didn't get the pepper. Well, now it's completely watered down. You've ruined it. <laughs> Absolutely ruined it. I wouldn't mind reaching out to these guys. You think? You they're very small, so I doubt they're going to have... So I will say this, though. Mm. I like the robustness of the flavors. Mm -hmm. I think people going into a whiskey looking 
that are pri is prioritizing texture above all uh, mm -hmm. words above all else. This may be cr uh, come across as a little bitey. Yeah, this is not a smooth sip in whiskey. I wouldn't mind getting a barrel from them and then letting it stay here a little bit longer. You don't think that would just double down on the tannin on the tannins? No, I think that would wood? fill in the mid palate a little, depending on. Uh, because the barrel's already showing up. The barrel, the wood is already showing mm -hmm. up on the taste. You get the, you get the dark chocolate, you get the cherries, and there's uh, the barrel tannin right there. Add a little water, and it's really, it's still spicy. And that's the right word. It's very spicy. I don't know, man. You're feeling this one, and I'm on the fence. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. Blackwell, someone once said, there's a fine line between a whiskey expert and a well-informed alcoholic. Yeah. True. That always reminds me of the stereotype in the Old West where you have like the town drunk wasn't like just some dirty homeless guy. Right. He was like an ex professor from the East who mm -hmm. got in a duel and had to flee to right. avoid being hanged. And so he knows all of these things, but right. he's sort of just always at the corner of the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think your, this is going to sound mean, but within context, it's not. I think your dad mm. would make an amazing town drunk. Yeah, if he was a drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Like sitting in the corner of the bar. Telling stories. Yeah, yeah. Lots of random information and yeah, yeah. Uh, elaborate uh, facts and he's, stories. He's not a drunk, but the vibe of like just the long hair, kind of really casual, little, yeah. little pithy, keeps in a pithy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, pithy <laughs> until he's got a story. And then get ready to <laughs> just listen. That's the Whittington trait. Yes. Just listen. Your it dad... gets shorter each each generation. My grandfather <laughs> would take like four hours to tell a story about popping down to the grocery store. <laughs> I am I have the shortest stories of the Whittington family. Oh wow! All right. Well, maybe there's hope for Jackson or Cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that'll be an acceptable. Yeah. Uh, so my grandfather was the same way. Yeah. Hi, whiskey review. Um, I'll just just one thing he would always do, which drive me and my brother nuts. Everybody be talking and have a conversation, be at a restaurant somewhere. And then he'd just go, Boys! Everybody, everybody quiets, has to stop. Everybody quiets down, they look at him and he goes, Gotta tell you something. Oh no. Oh, I'm already. And then another like 15, anxious. 20 seconds goes by. So basically, it's about a minute's worth of content spread across the next 30 minutes. Oh, God. And it doesn't go anywhere. And it's like, yeah, he's, he's old. And like, at what point can I just continue the conversation I was having? <laughs> Jackson's going to be a longer storyteller than me. Yeah. But just because he constantly will actually himself. Like, you know the people who will well actually your story and interrupt you? Oh. You know, we were like, well, yeah. so the other day I was at this grocery store off of William Cannon's H-E-B. And someone's yeah. like, that's a Randall's. Right. Right? And they're constantly doing that to you. Right. Jackson does that to himself. <laughs> and so his stories will take longer. He corrects himself. Because he's constantly correcting his right. own sentences. I understand. Well, I was there on Thursday. Man. Oh, it was actually a Tuesday. Or I think that. And you're like, no, no. Well, no, no. Hold Tell on a second. Story. I am very sympathetic. The compulsion. Again, I know it's a whiskey review. It's fine. <laughs> the compulsion is so real. Whenever you're saying something, and you know, not even necessarily a correction, but you know I need to blow past this. It's a small detail, it but people be. are going to go, well, what about this? And what about this? And you mm -hmm. got to go, fuck, how much nuance and context and backstory do I have to give so people don't go, well, actually, so people it's like, just let story. me get through it. Yeah. Just go through the highlights of this. So it's an actual enjoyable experience. Yeah. But no, I understand that compulsion deeply. David Bajur, Burr, Jur, Jur. Hello, MBs. I had a question come to my mind while watching this. I hear the term barrel proof and cash drink the light. Here's my question. Can or do any distilleries proof down the whiskey while it is in the barrel mm -hmm. or is that exclusively done in totes or other containers? No, so there are a growing number. That's a brandy industry trick. There are a growing number of whiskey distilleries in the US and craft who are proofing in the barrel mm -hmm. in for two reasons. Yeah. Either to change what is coming out of the barrel right. and what it pulls from the wood or to bring it down to uh, bottling strength in the barrel. Yeah, I think the first I was exposed to this was um, with their friends over at uh, Iron Root. Yeah. Iron Root Republic. That was the first time I experienced it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, then that begs the next question. So, cash, strength, barrel proof, you know, these terms kind mean? of, these terms in terms of ABB, you're thinking maybe high, mid to high 50s, low 60s percent. Not necessarily. 
But could somebody do so much aggressive barrel proofing yeah. that they could slap on their cash strength and it'd be like a low 40s ABV? Yes. Wow. Now they do that, they're gonna draw the attention of the TTV who doesn't totally have a category for proofing in barrel yet. Right. And they just sort of, just don't ask, don't tell. Hey, I learned something today. Yeah. That's cool. That happens every once in a while. Yeah. Here's the fight experience. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your life. So that's what happens when you learn. <laughs> Brain. You, you, your you brain absorbs your... something new and it pushes out something that you needed. <laughs> you fight, may you fight for a friend. May you steal me and steal our heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. <laughs> you switched it up. <laughs>